Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. Lord, I thank you for how you're going to speak to us about um, doors and first our doors and then your doors. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that after this sermon that you'll create doors in people's lives that they can walk through or either by their own choice back away from. Father, I pray that you will, that the ears and eyes of the Spirit will be so prevalent in this sermon that you, that you will just permeate the very soul of our being and do what only you can do. Heal, heal, restore, Heal, restore, deliver, set free. God, I am an oracle of you, set to do your bidding, set to do your will. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, guys. Um, today, I'm going to talk. My sermon is called The Philosophy of Doors, which is really interesting because it's what I'm going to talk today is not really a philosophy but this is the title that the Lord gave me. I had a completely different sermon <laughs> in mind with with an equally crazy title and maybe I'll preach that another day but I I was watching, um, I was watching, uh, Bishop Jake's, um, one of his 25th anniversary clips, um, where he was, he was about to teach Bible study, and he had, uh, a makeshift door to the side of the stage. people want to go to that door um, before the sermon, they can, and people started coming. He, he didn't even get a chance to teach. It was phenomenal. And I found myself thinking about today's church, how we're just so in the protocol and so and to this is the time we do this, this is the time we do that. And I find myself praying, get us back to those days where you're really God. So that was one, one message. And then to confirm it even more, um, I was watching a day after, I think on Friday, um, or Thursday, I was watching someone else, and they were talking about there's another door, and that's when the Lord gave me this title in this sermon. He wanted me to talk about uh, different kind of doors, so that's what I'm going to do today. Um, first of all, doors are a portal. Um, doors lead you to somewhere, either somewhere good or not so good. And sometimes, uh, because there are all different types of doors, sometimes you don't know where it's leading you until you, you get to where it is you're going. Um, and sometimes you can tell where it's leading you um, just by looking at the door and just by looking at uh, what, at uh, where, where it seems to be leading and sometimes it takes a different path. And the Lord says today, the door is not what you think it is. 
you might think the door is leading you to the garage, but it's really leading you to somewhere outside the garage um, that you need to be um, instead of the garage. Um, sometimes you 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 open some doors and went down some paths that you thought, oh, this is leading me here and this is great, but it led you to somewhere totally different, either somewhere, th and that somewhere different was awful or that somewhere different was wow, God is wonderful, and all that stuff, so, so it said, God saying, this door is not leading to where you think it is, and, and she, he said, either good or bad, the Lord is clearly saying to me right now, tell them this door is not leading to where they think it is and just to hold on hold the fort because this door is going to lead you somewhere that you would never expect it to lead and at the end of the road you'll see why I had to take you through that door. Quite often, the Lord takes us through circumstances that we have no idea. Uh, he takes us through um, doors that we just think, oh, this is a wooden door, but it leads to nowhere or leads to what we think is nowhere, but that nowhere is taking us somewhere. And you've been um, trying to open doors that you think will lead somewhere, but the and you've been pulling on the handle and pulling on the handle and trying to open with with keys and every key you you try it won't open and he's saying he's saying those doors that you think are leading somewhere are not but try the door that you think is not leading anywhere try the thing about you that you just think oh my god I wish this thing would go. I wish the struggle would go. Um, and he's also saying to me right now, the door that will lead somewhere is in your struggle. That thing that you're trying to get rid of, that thing that you think, oh my God, if they knew this about me, people wouldn't like me or whatever. That thing is really a door. That struggle, that thing you're thinking of as a storm is really a door. And you really need to understand that it's leading. That thing you're trying to get rid of is the very thing that is leading you to your destiny um and this is not for everything this is not for things that are harmful or things that are um detrimental like or deadly i'm not saying that people are getting sick or getting coronavirus because that is a door but even for things that are deadly and detrimental, they not they might not be a door, but they may be a hallway that is leading to a door. So 
when we went into this coronavirus, we weren't prepared for, for anything. We didn't know anything about math. We thought if you were wearing a mask, you were weird, weird and you, you needed help. But now we know that the mask is protecting us. Um, and we didn't know anything about social distancing. We didn't know anything about anything like that. So, so coronavirus was a hallway to lead to a door to teach us things that we needed to know that society needed to wake up and work on. I, I was talking to um, the, the lady that um, helps me get my computer and different funding for my computer. And she said, um, she said, without this virus, we wouldn't have known uh, how to do things virtually. So I'm saying in a way that although the virus was so not helpful, but in, in a way it's, it's created a do a hallway that will lead to a door. Um, that will help uh, fulfill the world's ultimate destiny. It taught us things that we needed to learn that we couldn't learn any other way. Um, it taught us about how to, how to adequately control uh, a viral disease. It taught us about, like I said before, social distancing. So sometimes the stuff you're looking to as doors are not the doors. But sometimes um, the, the stuff that you're not looking to as doors are the doors. And the Lord says there are doors that you're trying and trying and trying that are not the doors to your destiny. And there are doors that you just neglected that you said, oh, that's nothing. But that's the thing that will lead to your ultimate uh, destiny in, or where he wants you to be. Because I believe that destiny never stops. It's not a destination, it's a journey, a journey that you, that you just keep on uh, reaching another place and reaching another place until you're out of this life. But you never, um, me, me, destiny is not a destination, it's on the journey. And you may have uh, stops along the way. You may have moments of victory, moments of sadness, moments of pain. But you never really stop learning. You never really stop growing. And those who stop learning and stop growing, and once you stop learning and stop growing, you die either spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um... So, the Lord says now, look for the hidden doors. Look for the things that you have cast off as just, oh, that's just, um, that's just, uh, this, this thing or that thing or that's no big deal. And that's what God will use for your door and sometimes doors are forged out of pain 
sometimes your greatest pain is what God will use to create a door to to let you step into your destiny. I think I told this story before um, of how I came on YouTube. Um, I came on YouTube after uh, I, w I went to a church for a long time trying to get um, in ministry, trying to get them to notice me, trying to do all this. And there was, after seven years, there was a, a, a day that I, I, I just knew that the Lord had other things for me. But before that, before I was scheduled to leave that church, um, somebody in leadership at that church said um, to me, somebody I really admired said, um, you, will, you will never, um, you will never be in ministry unless you get out of that chair. And I was so devastated at that time. I was devastated, absolutely devastated. Because here I I put my energy, I put my time, I put everything into what, everything into that church, everything into that pastor, everything into that ministry. And to hear that totally devastated me. I stayed home for, um, I think about three months at that point, three or four months, or maybe even six or a year, I forget, I forget, um, but while I was home, I said, God, I have so much in me, what do you want me to do with it? And then, he, this was around... Uh, 2011 and he caused me to to watch a video on YouTube it was just a video with a song uh, and at the end of that video it said I use this program and this program to um, to put, um, do this video. So I uploaded, so I downloaded that program. It was free at the time, it's not free anymore. But it was free at the time and it caused me to make my first video and then I got a camera and then I started uh, really preaching and then I started adding music and then um, the rest is history. Then I, then I um, uh, switched to Facebook uh, when they, um, when Facebook got technology where you can record videos. So, but without that pain or that person saying that, it wouldn't have created in me a desire to to speak to the world using uh, social media. So if they if I had gotten what I wanted, I I'd gotten to work in ministry, or I'd gotten to preach a sermon or direct a Bible study the way I wanted. I would never have been able to speak to all of you now because I would have gotten what I wanted and this is it and now I'm reaching a, a lot of people that I wouldn't be reaching so God used my pain to create a door and that's what he wants to do in some of your lives today he wants to use your pain 
to create a door that you walk that you can walk through some of us are waiting for doors and trying specific things that we think are doors but they're really not uh, or they're not the right doors and if we try them um, will lead to just it'll lead to destruction or it'll lead to uh, it'll lead to our ruin he's saying it's in the hidden doors you so my main my main point today is trust the hidden door there is there there are doors that are hidden that you don't even know are doors but they are let's uh oh i can't believe i forgot to tell tell you uh what doors actually are my bad uh doors are portals of entry so so whether it be natural doors or spiritual doors they're portals of entry there are they are um there are they are structures that you use to open and close so basically um so when you walk through a door like any door you are entering somewhere or leaving somewhere so doors for me are poor are portals of entry and exiting so so because there are they are portals of entry and exiting um what doors are you using today are you using the God ordained doors that He's ordained for you to walk through, or are you trying to create your own doors? Remember, I said the doors that you think are doors to your destiny are not, and the doors that you think are not doors to your destiny, they are. So are you using the god ordained portals of entry or are you are you trying to use your own and they're not working and you're trying the keys and knocking and knocking and you see nobody's answering that is not the door for you that is not the god ordained door that you think is going to happen that is the self-ordained door that that you're trying to walk through or the devil ordained door that looks like a god ordained door that you're trying to follow a good idea but is it a god idea or is it something to leave you down a maze that you that you have to turn here and and swivel there and do this your doors are about to become clear your doors that you're about, that you are ordained to walk through are about to become clear and God is about to send um, porters to help you get through those doors look for the doors look 
God is about to reveal in your life the hidden doors, the hidden portals of entry that he, he is ordaining for you. You've been struggling, you've been trying this all along, and the Lord says, stop. There's ordained doors that I need you to walk through. I need you to stop hustling and start listening. And I will show you the right door to enter, enter, or the door you need to exit. Some people need to exit doors. Some people are are right now um, in places that they ought not to be in and they need to find the exit. They need to find that red sign above the door that says exit and they need to take that right away because you cannot enter something until you exit something else. And sometimes spiritually, we want what God has for us. We're like, okay, Lord, use me and show us this. But we're, we're still in a place. We're still entering a place that God doesn't want us to be in. And we cannot go where he wants us to go or be used by God until we are exited the wrong place. Sometimes we want to want to enter one place while we're still while we have the exit. Sometimes we want to exit sometimes we want to enter the the right place while we haven't exited the wrong place. The Lord said, you need to exit before you can enter. You need to exit before you can enter. So, for an example, you want a God or ordained man, you want a God-ordained uh, person to spend your life with, but yet you're still, you're still receiving texts from this joker who treats you badly and you know God says leave that relationship. But you physically left it, but not emotionally or mentally left it. Some of us have physically left places, but we've not emotionally exited the door. We have not, our bodies are not, are not there, but our spirits, our emotions, our resources are still there. And he's saying, I need you to totally leave it. He said, you have the strength to leave that door today. You have the strength to leave that door, to exit that door, which is killing you and causing you destruction today. He said, I need you. There's so much more for you. I need you to mentally, emotionally, and spiritually leave that place before I can bring you to another door. He says, I can't bring you to another door and open it for you until you exit that place. So I declare today an exit strategy, Lord, Give us all, myself included, exit strategies to exit the, those 
detrimental doors that that have been plaguing us forever. Those detrimental mental the those detrimental mental doors um, those spiritually detrimental doors, those physically um, detrimental doors that are totally killing us. And remember, doors are portals of entry and exiting. So, so give us an exit strategy. And also, not only does he want us to get an extra exit strategy, he wants us, God wants us today to get an enter strategy. We often talk about an exit strategy to exit places. We don't necessarily talk about an enter strategy to enter places. Some of us want things, but we don't know how to enter, how to receive the door, how to receive what's inside the door, um, how to receive the blessing. And the Lord is saying, um, you need to know not only how to exit, but how to enter. Um, Because there are different ways to enter a door. You can walk, you can run, you can strut, you can skip, you can, you know, just stand there and look cute and not enter the door at all. He said, for different people, there are going to be different enter strategies as well. And he's like, ask me what strategy you need to know how to enter the place that you want to enter. Sometimes we pray for a place, but we don't know once we get it how to enter. It's totally different than what we thought. It's totally different than what we've seen on TV. It's totally different than anything we could have thought about. And he said, you need not only an exit strategy for this door, but you need an enter strategy. And sometimes an enter and exit strategy requires uh, prayer. Um, We need to pray about how to enter and exit the door. We need teaching or or learning from someone. And sometimes we need just tools. So we need to pray and we need teaching and we need tools. So we need those things either whether we're entering or exiting doors. And remember, doors are portals of entry and exiting. So guys, thank you for for Uh, listening to me today. I really appreciate it. So much. Take care. Bye.
Is here right now. He's the God of the turn He's the God of the turn around. He's the God of the turn around. Your blessing is here right now. He's the God of the turn around. He is here to heal. He is here to restore. He is here to do so much more than you've ever dreamed. Believe and receive that he's the God of the turnaround. He's the God of the turnaround. Your blessing is here right now. He's the God of the turnaround. He's saying, God is saying, for this turnaround, you have to enter the correct door. He also says in the scriptures, he says, I stand at the door and knock, and there is someone who he's knocking on the door of your heart today, and he's saying, let me in. You've been carrying this load for too long, and I want relationship with you. So just let him in. And just say that you need him. Say that, say in your own way, whatever's in your heart. Um, the Lord, um, Paul says, if you believe in your heart and, conf and confess, if you can, if you believe in, if you can, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. So he's, so he's saying, I just need you to confess that I'm he here and that I love you and that I'm real and that you believe in me. And then I'll come and turn your life around. You want the God of the turnaround that I was thinking about? Well, he's here if you want him. All you need to do is ask. And a lot of people uh, 
pray with people. I don't do that because I believe that God wants to hear the person's cry, the person's words, um, the person's um, way of communicating with him because everybody communicates with the Father slowly, slightly differently. And um, my words is just me communicating and me praying um, for you. And he doesn't want that. He wants you to pray for you. So it's no, it's, it's not, it's not hard. Just be yourself and tell him that you need him. Tell him that you believe he is. And he'll come into you, into your life and change it. Because he's the God of the turnaround. The God of the turnaround. Your fire scene is here right now. He's the God of the turnaround. He's the God of the turnaround. The God of the turnaround. Your blessing is here right now. He's the God of the turn. I'll see you later. And if you did, if you did invite the Lord into your life and you need help with second steps, just message me. I'll be glad to help you. Thanks. Take care. See you next week. And if there's ever something that you want me to tackle in one of my sermons, um, feel free to message me that too. And feel free to share and, and comment on these sermons. I love hearing your stories and how they're affecting you. Or just to say hi. That's great too. Talk to you later. See you next week. I declare that the right doors will open for you. And I declare that he will reveal to you uh, the hidden doors that you've been ignoring for years. The doors that you said, oh, he can't use that or whatever. I declare that revelation of doors will be yours this week. I declare that new life will come to you this week through doors that you really didn't know were doors, but really were. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation of doors today, for your portals of entry for using our pain as doors, or for just being the door, because we know you you call yourself the door. So you, you are the number one door, you are the number one portal of entry uh, to this life, this abundant life that you talk about in the scriptures. We receive you, Lord God. We receive you in a new way this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bye, guys.